Mr. Mike Rendell, welcome again to this edition of Celsius Forum Profiles. With us back by popular demand, I might say, is Dr. Sanjay Godwani. Uh, we did a show last time about ticks and Lyme disease, and your viewers had a lot of questions. So we're here with Dr. Sanjay Godwani again to answer some of those questions and give you a little bit more information on what's going on. Thank you so much for coming back and letting us know uh, some of the information on this ticks and Lyme disease, which is the same maybe at epidemic proportions this year. Yeah, Larry, thanks again for having me on the show. I really, really enjoy being here. Uh, I think it's great to get all the awareness out to the, to the public about Lyme disease, uh, especially now that it is tick season. Now, what exactly is Lyme disease? Just to, as a refresh for some people. Yeah, so you know, Lyme disease actually falls into a category of what's called a tick-borne illness. Uh, essentially, what happens is ticks are like a vector. Uh, essentially, what they do is they uh, get infected with this Borrelia species or Lyme disease or another disease, which we'll talk about. And then when an infected tick feeds or bites a human being, it transmits this condition. Uh, so Lyme disease is one of those tick-borne illnesses. Uh, it is the most common uh, and you're right, actually this, the, the cases are rising each year and uh, actually if you look at the demographics and, and the maps of, of where Lyme disease is prevalent, the geographic area is also expanding in the Northeast. Yeah, because well, last time we had, we had showed the map and it was like this little area. Now it seems like it's going all the way across it's, the it's coast. It's gradually getting a little bit larger because again, you got to realize it's, it's the environment, right? So it's the change in the seasons that happens in the Northeast that helps to regrow these ticks. Um, so of course, Lyme disease is very seasonal uh, and actually May, June, July, August are, are prime time months because uh, now that the, the weather starts to get a little bit warmer, um, these ticks start to like, you know, pretty much come out of their dormancy and uh, start feeding and, and infecting hosts. So is that where the tick bites the squirrel or a rodent or a rabbit or a deer yeah. and then falls off, waits for the human to come by, right. and that saliva or whatever bacteria is all over it, it bites you, right. that goes into your bloodstream and you, that's how you get infected? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's really it in a nutshell. You know, I think that the main thing is that there's a life cycle for the ticks. It can, each tick can last for a long time, but I think the main thing is that once a, a, a tick grows old enough to infect a human, uh, that is when Lyme disease is transmitted. Now, what are some, some of the signs and symptoms? We've got a lot of viewer mail about this. A lot of people worried. Um, you had said last time, and uh, just to answer a quick viewer's question, was that uh, you, you, have, you don't get a rash, you don't get a bullseye, you can still have Lyme disease. Is that true? Yeah, so I think this is really the point that I want to hone in on our audience. You know, like, uh, like you know, what is Lyme disease? So we know it's a tick-related infection. We know that it can cause this rash, this bullseye rash. Everybody knows that. Um, but a lot of people don't see the rash. Uh, and, and the main reason why you don't see the rash is because it could be on the back of your knee. It could be on your thigh. Uh, these ticks get on your skin and crawl through your hair, and you might not notice any kind of rashes. Uh, so just because you don't see the rash, that doesn't mean you didn't get Lyme disease. Really, you have to be aware of if you've been in an environment, like if you were out hiking, if you were out doing a lot of garden work, these things can crawl up into your sleeves and give you a bite on your back and you'll never see it. So actually more than half of the people who do have Lyme disease, they don't see the rash. And, and again, the main thing is to realize the signs and symptoms like you mentioned is how do you know if you have it? If you don't see it, you don't see these ticks because I'm sure you got some great pictures uh, for the audience to see about how small these things are uh, and they're like literally the size of a poppy seed you know uh, so you don't see them so how do you know that you've been bit by a tick um, and, and I think one of the major signs and symptoms is flu-like illness uh, and really you gotta know about that because there is no such thing as the summer flu Right. You know, if you're going to a, a clinic, a walk in a doctor's office, and you say, listen, uh, you know, I'm stuffy, uh, I feel body aches, uh, I got low-grade fevers, there's no such thing as the summer flu. It's not flu season, it's tick season. Right. And, and I think that's the first thing that we all got to be aware of. 
uh, into recognizing and, and prompting immediate attention is if you're getting fevers, chills, night sweats, if you're feeling just like beat down, you got body aches. Those are some of the initial signs and symptoms to look out for. And that could be with or without a rash. If you see the rash, the rash is diagnostic. And I know you got some really good pictures on that about the bullseye rash with the central clearing. Looks like a Target logo almost. Right. Or a Target sign, you know? Yeah, a b the big bullseye. And, right. you know, another <clears throat> problem is, is that, okay, so now you have this, these flu-like symptoms. Uh, years ago, when they gave you a test for Lyme, it wasn't too accurate. Right. And one of our viewers had uh, written in that they wanted to know how accurate are the new Lyme disease tests that are yeah. coming out. You know, we're still struggling in this area, to be honest. And, uh, and I think this is challenging as a physician to tell patients and tell the audience and, and kind of sort of try and explain, like, no, your tests don't really show it. Um, maybe they don't show it yet. Um, you know, and I think I'll come back a little bit later and talk more specifics about the tests. Um, but I think I do want to try to tell patients out there uh, some other things to look out for. All right. Um, Lyme disease is broken up into stages. And let's say that first initial stage is the fevers and the flu-like symptoms. And let's say you don't pick it up. You're like, okay, I got a little virus. It's fine. It'll get better. I got a little cold. Right. It'll go. It will go away. It will right. get better. If you do nothing, it'll get better. Right. But then you've let this organism kind of sort of incubate, so to say. That initial period of seeing the rash from the tick bite, letting the disease kind of sort of settle into your system could take maybe a few weeks. Uh, on average, about one to two weeks. It could be about three days to a month. And it really depends on how, how much of the bacteria has gotten into you. Um, so the early stage, they call it stage one or the early stage is when you get those symptoms. But let's say if you did nothing, this could progress into a second stage. And now this is the, this is the part that gets kind of scary because now the disease has been in your system for a month, maybe two months and you start getting neurological symptoms. You start getting, it can affect the heart. You can get carditis. Uh, it can actually lead to heart blocks. And just to explain to the general uh, public out there what a heart block is, it's really your heart is beating lub, dub, lub, dub. Essentially, you'll get a lub, but you may not get a dub. And you can imagine what could happen. People right. could, they could syncopize, they could faint. Uh, they can either get uh, like some chest discomfort if it's worsening right. carditis. One major thing to look out for at the second stage is Bell's palsy. Uh, so you get drooping of one side of your face and it, it looks like somebody may be having a stroke, you know. And of course, anything like that, you, you definitely go to the ER but I know a lot of physicians are, are well aware of this particular symptom and they will test you for Lyme. And at that point, some of these tests will come up positive. And after ruling out other things, you know, you'll probably get treated for presumed Lyme disease if there is no obviously stroke or something like really like that. Which was one of the viewer questions that said that uh, they wanted to know that when you're first bitten by a tick, Right. You can't just go run into the doctor and be tested. Yeah. You have to apparently wait. There's a waiting period for your body to make an antibody that the test picks up yeah. on. Yeah, you know, so here's the other challenge, right? Like, we know the complications of Lyme disease as physicians, and, and I know you guys hear it out there, what's happening to your friends, your neighbors, so on and so forth, with the chronic disease that comes with Lyme, with Lyme you know, the arthritis, the neurological symptoms, the brain fog, um, really, again, the cardiac involvement. And, and in those late stages, it, it's a recurrent problem. And it's hard to treat in those stages, you know? Um, but then you're told to go to the ER, you found, you went to the doctor, and they're like, well, just wait a couple of weeks, you know? And it's, right. it's hard to tell people that. Um, so the CDC does have some newer guidelines. If there is really like 
a a tick bite you can prove you see an engorged tick an engorged tick meaning that the tick's been on you it's, it's fed on you yeah um and there is evidence that this could be a lyme disease some um some of the studies show that a prophylactic dose just a one-time dose of antibiotics like a doxycycline is helpful in minimizing the risk for transmission right but if if you found a tick on you, you didn't have a bite, like yes, you're you're supposed to wait, and get tested because, like you said before, the tests are just not accurate enough to pick it up. Right. Um, and on that point, there are actually a few newer tests that have come out uh, that do check for the virus in PCR form, uh, a polymerase chain reaction, which can pick up the virus immediately within three to five days. Right. Uh, but again, it's the availability of the test. Does every lab right. offer it? Uh, is it a specialized test? Who does right. the test? Um, but if you can get access to some of these advanced tests, then it would be helpful. But you do have to wait because the way the body reacts is it creates antibodies right. or bands. And you need your body's immune system to give it four to six weeks right. for these tests to show up. Right, so the test sees that the body has made this antibody and that's a confirmation that you have Lyme disease. Yeah, again, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough diagnosis, but in the right clinical setting with the tools that we have now, I, I think we're confident and, I, and I'm with a lot of the physicians out there. We've discussed it. Uh, I think this season we're, we're really looking to be uh, more concerned with the story and also more concerned with the exposures uh, and really prompting that, that initial dose of treatment right away. Now, also, uh, viewers have written in about Lyme disease. Lyme disease is not the only disease that you can get from ticks now. Yeah, so Lyme disease, you know, it's not. And it's a great question, a great, great point, because there's multiple ticks out there. You know, there's multiple different ticks, and sometimes patients will bring ticks into the office, and they said, this is what stung me. And, and they all have very distinct features. Although they're small, if you stick them under a little magnifying glass, you can pick up the distinct features. Right. So Lyme disease is transmitted by the deer tick or the Ixodes species or Ixodes scapularis, this tick. And uh, this tick is typically also carrying other organisms. It can carry anaplasmosis, it can carry uh, babesiosis, it can also carry some viruses. So this tick can carry multiple diseases. And the great point about talking about these ticks is you don't always have a tick with you right. to say, oh, well, this is, this is, the, this is the, the Lone Star tick. You know, right. this tick doesn't carry Lyme disease. Don't worry about it, you know, or, or worry about other diseases. Right. But you have to look for co-infections. Because if you have Lyme disease, there is a chance that you were bit by a tick that carries more than just Lyme disease. Um, and then the other tick is the Lone Star tick. Uh, the Lone Star tick carries this infection. It's called um, Southern Tick Associated Rash Illness, or, or Star Eye. Uh, it's getting more and more awareness out there. Uh, so I'll, I'll spend a minute talking about that. Yes. Um, and that tick can also carry um, ehrlichiosis. So again, all of these tick-borne illnesses, they do have the same presenting complaints. Fevers, chills, sweats, joint pain, joint swelling, arthritis, aches. But some of them involve your stomach. You can get like gastroenteritis. Some of them can affect the bloodstream, um, and then some of them can give you neurological manifestations like, like confusion, uh, like encephalitis. Um, and, and another key point is not all ticks carry bacteria. Right. Some ticks are parasites, like Babesia is actually a bloodstream pathogen. It lives inside your blood cells and uh, you have to treat it differently. For the most part, if you get doxycycline, if you're above the age of eight, young kids can get doxycycline because right. it can affect their teeth mm -hmm. and their bones. Uh, so for those 
for those younger and those who can't tolerate doxycycline, there are other antibiotics like amoxicillin, cefiroxamine that you can take orally. Um, but doxycycline, for the most part, will cover a lot of these ticks, but it won't cover Babesia. Right. So you need different medications. That's why the key is not just the tick that bit you, but the key is also looking for other co-infections. Uh, and that's where I think the audience really needs to be aware that there's a lot of buzz about Lyme disease, and granted, it's, it's well worthy of that respect, Right. Because there's just so many cases of Lyme disease. There's almost 50,000 cases of Lyme disease a year. Uh, and and it's, it's growing, like you said, at epidemic proportions. Uh, you know, most of them are confirmed, and there's about six to 8,000 that are not confirmed, but they're possible. Right. The other ticks, they range about, you know, 5,000 to 10,000 cases. But if you miss the overlap, you treated one, you didn't treat the other, right. that chronic condition still develops. You know, that chronicity still develops with the joint pain, the arthritis. And, and sometimes patients are coming to see a rheumatologist like myself or another specialist. And it, you know, we might have missed that window to catch it early enough. And the diagnostic, that has to be the most important because, let's say, not only did you get Lyme, yeah. but you also got, say, rocky mounted spotted fever. Right. And now you have, you know, the double whammy on you. Yeah. Because this one tick that bit you possibly right. had both of those diseases. Right. And a lot of people don't realize that. Or, or you could have gotten bit by two or three ticks. That's true. Who knows? You know, you could have gotten bit by a tick, didn't see a rash, then got bit by another tick, saw some rash, uh, and that's that star eye infection. So the rash looks similar, but it doesn't have that central clearing. Right. And typically speaking, the lone star tick, actually, this is a great point for the audience, is that the lone star tick um, can carry this infection, but it can also cause a meat allergy. And, um, you know, a lot of physicians are, are telling patients, especially if they see the lone star tick, again, it's called the lone star tick because if you look at the tick, you'll see like a little white dot on its back. You can't miss it, you know. Right. And it can cause a meat allergy to a, to a particular protein called alpha-gal. And we can test for that in the blood tests. But we do advise patients to do what you're doing. Like, you don't have to go on any kind of restricted diet after a tick bite. But definitely just monitor yourself and, and, and see if things are changing, especially in the setting of, like, flu-like symptoms. The star eye infection generally tends to clear faster. Um, people respond to the antibiotics right away. It has not been associated with like neurological symptoms and prolonged arthritis symptoms, uh, but these those initial generalized symptoms do get better, and those patients have a better response to antibiotics and a faster response to antibiotics. Now, also, uh, a viewer had written in that if you did get Lyme, right, and you're being treated for it, yeah, can you still get it again? Yes, absolutely, especially in this season. Because you're out, you're out and, and, and hiking, you're, you know, you're doing garden work, you're, you're just having a good time in the summer, you know? But if you got it, let's say now, and I think May is actually Lyme Disease Awareness, right. it, awareness Month, and, but you, know, you, you got treated for it in May, um, then you're out again in July, August, you can get it again. Uh, and that's why, again, you got to keep in mind there's no summer flu, still get tested, and it, you really got to, we got to really talk about prevention and, and awareness. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. Yeah. And then the last tick that I forgot to mention was the, uh, the dog tick. Uh, and that carries the Rocky Mountain. Now, Rocky Mountain actually has a very typical rash. It's on your palms and soles. Right. Very few infections do that. And this time of the year, you know, we're on top of it. Yeah. And, and people are generally very, very sick. With, with Rocky Mountain spot, like very sick, like systemic disease, blood count changes, almost in the hospital sick. So if you do see a rash on your palms and soles, bring it to somebody's attention right away. Um, and, and it's treated, it's treated with doxycycline. Well, let's get into prevention because we had a couple of questions about that. Yeah. Uh, some people were a little worried that some of the uh, tick prevention stuff sprays that they would spray on them may actually be toxic to their pets and yeah. To them. Yeah, you know, like, you know, we're all into this. We're, we're very health conscious, which is great. And I think we also need to be aware of how to protect ourselves. 
So the number one way to not get Lyme disease is prevention. Uh, right. So what does that really mean, right? Like, so if you're going hiking, like wear light colored clothing, long sleeves, light clothing, long sleeves, put your pants, socks over it, tuck your clothes in. When you come home, inspect, take off all your clothes, inspect your kids, guys. Like you got to really, really, your kids may be playing in the, in the lawn, but when you bring them back home, strip them down before you bathe them. Look through their hair, look through their 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 back, you know, their neck, and uh, really got to check and look for this. And yeah, spraying yourself with the appropriate, you know, D. There's a, there's, there's so many sprays out right. there. I mean, honestly, find the one that works for you. Make sure it says tick repellent on there. I mean, I don't want you to bathe in this stuff, right. you know, because then, yeah, it can get into your bloodstream. It can get some, you know, you can get toxins yeah, into that. Yeah, it's got to be kept be away careful. from your mucous membranes. you got to be like careful that. with how right. much you put on the kids. Um, but there's a lot of organic stuff out there, stuff that's safer for the environment, getting your lawn sprayed, uh, things like that. And then what do you do if you find a tick, right? Uh, so the proper technique is to grab tweezers and, and grab at the base of the head and neck and then pull out gently you don't want to grab it from the body because right. you're just putting more lyme disease in you right you know you don't want you're to do actually that squeezing as if it's like a, a a bulb yeah right if you squeeze it in you're getting more lyme disease so you grab it at the head and then gently pull it out um and then you, you watch and you see what happens and if there's a concern if the tick looks engorged the thing that you had said before, too, about the uh, identifications, because yeah. the, uh, the tick with Lyme is yeah. black legs, right? right? Exactly. The uh, Lone Star tick has a white dot. White dot. And the dog tick. It, it's a little bit bigger, and it, it has, like, little ruffles around the edges. Right. Uh, so, you know, I can recognize it. I'm sure a lot of physicians can. You, you can Google this yourself, to be honest. Right. And you can see what the pictures look like. Uh, one main thing is don't panic, you know, like uh, there's a lot of buzz and rightfully so, but really prevention is the key. Early diagnosis, if, if you do get bit, you should check it, uh, seek it to someone's attention, you know, call, uh, call your, your primary care. Uh, I, I think as a rheumatologist, you know, we're actually getting more awareness out there and actually dedicating more time at this time of the season just for patients because we don't want you to wait a month, two months right. to be seen by somebody. Right. Um, so we're also trying to work on things and getting those patients seen right away, especially with tick exposures. Right. Um, and then, you know, we, uh, we do know that sometimes this can become chronic, um, so we really want to prevent that. Yeah, and like you said, you know, not, not to panic, okay, you know, this Follow the rules, do the right thing. Don't you know? No need to run out and make make out a will. Right, uh, right. You know, because like you said, this medicine, uh, this area is evolving quickly to yeah. make the tests happen quicker and quicker. But yeah, prevention, no, I, like you said, number one, spray yourself, wear light colored clothing. Right. Be very careful on where you're going. Yeah. Number one area that they're finding now, just released from New York State is watershed areas seem to be a major, major breeding ground. Yeah. Uh, the high grass by beaches, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Avoid at all costs. Do not let your kids play in that or anything right, like that. Right, right. It's a very, very bad area. Now, um, one of the other viewers had a question stating that um, the symptoms for Rocky Mounted Spotted Fever and Lyme are totally different. If you could just make a clarification on that. Yeah, so again, the main difference between those two is that the rash, right? Like the rash is like the hallmark. And in this particular case, those two diseases, the rash really distinguishes them. Uh, the fevers, the joint pains, all of that is common. Um, but with Rocky Mountain, you will have like significant blood changes, like in your liver test, your blood counts. Uh, you'll just generally speaking be a lot sicker. Um, it'll almost mimic like a sepsis kind of a picture if it gets to that level. Um, and so the main differences are really the presentation. And Lyme has this long incubation period, you know, it takes some time for it to like get in there. Then it has these stages. Stage one is that early one. Then 
the arthritis sets in, the Bell's palsy, the carditis, the heart blocks, and then it becomes chronic in all of those areas. Right. Uh, and then Rocky Mountain sort of just progresses like rapidly, you know, and if it's really, uh, if you've been bitten by a, a virulent tick and gotten a lot of this in you, then you, you'll probably end up getting evaluated right away. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's rough. Now, just before we wrap up, a couple of quick words too. Um, the uh, mosquitoes. Yeah. Now we have to worry about not only Zika. I know, I know. West Nile. I know. And, you know, some of these other things that are coming out. So I it's, know. it's basically beware of the ticks, but also watch out for the mosquitoes, ladies and gentlemen. I don't like gentlemen. ticks, I don't like mosquitoes either. Right. Yeah, so uh, there's, there's been a lot of talk about the Zika virus, and, you know, and I think uh, right now, you know, obviously the southern areas and states ha have been really, they've done a really marvelous job in, like, Containing. controlling that and, and putting out all the rules and regulations in place. You know, I would hear, you know, listen, there's, there's mosquitoes everywhere, there's the West Nile, you know, like, we really want to, again, it's not that you can't enjoy yourself, but you really want to be aware of the symptoms. Right. Again, really honing in on the symptoms. Right. Uh, so really have to be cautious out there about, um, and, and it may not even be you who's bit by a ticket. It could be your neighbor. Like, you know, share this information with, with your friends, you know, and I think this is great again because, you know, spending a half an hour talking about this with you and, and sharing this to the public, uh, I can always reference it to my to my colleagues, to, to my patients, and I say, listen, you really got to watch this because right. you're going to get so much more information out of it. And, you know, you know, in this busy day and age, sometimes you can't really spend all that time explaining in the depth that we've done right. today. So so I, I, I thank you for that. That's great. Well, I wanted to thank you for coming back on the show and answering all, right. all our viewers' absolutely, questions. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. We hope to have you back in the future. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it, Larry. Maybe the fall or winter to see uh, what else is going to happen. with. We that. could ask them if they want to hear about something in particular. I'm, I'm more than happy to talk about you know rheumatoid arthritis, whatever they want to talk about. And it'll be great. Well, until next time, I'm Larry Mike Arenda. Have a happy and healthy, safe summer. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.